So Samira Virani has done this for like decades, super experienced. And um, at AT&T, which is definitely a corporation, she has been responsible for building platform enablers for digital transformation, which sounds a bit buzzwordy, but th this is really real, very real. And she leads the development of state-of-the-art omnichannel content management, another kind of like wordy thing that's super real, if you think about it. And yeah, front-end platforms that are integrated with digital marketing tools. You get where I'm going. Super real, that as well. And doing all of this, providing like personalization, the right things for the right people, and so on. When she's not doing this amazing stuff, she enjoys trying out new recipes for her kids, reading, painting, singing, and walking. So please welcome to the stage, Samira. Yes, I'm not going to sing today because we don't want to vacate the venue yet. So Magnus, if you have a problem in the evening, just call me. So, <laughs> so we'll start with, um, so here today I am actually to talk about, we've been talking about the structure content since past two days, but the discussion is not complete without talking about the platform that makes it all happen, right? And so today I'm here to share our journey of content management and how we got where we wanted to be, right? And so we will start with who we are. We are like, B defines any large organization of our size, which has like 80 plus applications or flows that using multiple content management platform, we have 60 plus development teams that is designing and deploying this content structure. We have hundreds of content implementers and designers that are using this platform to, to deploy the content day in and day out that feeds into the various channels. And what we have is like, we have multiple sources and types of content. We have like structured, semi-structured content and somewhat unstructured content in multiple CMS platforms. We have digital assets in our digital asset management platform. We have highly structured content in catalogs and databases. And we have user-generated content. And we have multiple variations of this content that feeds into the different devices and different channels. And we have to maintain the multiple variations of this content for the different types of user segments, different user testing, doing the split testing, right? And we have the updates that is happening on our systems is the volume and the frequency is very large. And we have multiple stakeholders that, that is part of this content life cycle. We have marketing, we have designers, we have content writers, we have uh, content implementers, we have application development teams, and then we have uh, platform teams. All of these stakeholders get involved through this content life cycle. And so it then follows that this uh, interdependency requires close coordinations and the multiple hand of disciplines, right? And then we have, like any organization, we have this compliance um, requirements. We have to follow the audits of legal, brand, marketing audit, auditing requirement. We have, to, uh, we have to adhere to the SEO best practices. We have this accessibility, record management compliance requirement, right? All of this results in very complex content publishing workflows that we had to maintain. So now going back to where we started. We started our journey for the, with the traditional CMS platform. At that time, we did not have this plethora of technologies and tools to choose from. The devices and the channels that we had to support were still limited, manageable, right? So content used to be authored specific to a page, to a device. And and that, that was, it used to be tightly coupled with the presentation and the domain APIs. 
So as you can imagine, any updates to the content structure would need to go through the full content lifecycle, right? And then we have to, in order to support the uh, multiple versions of the content, to support the parallel releases that, we, that, go, that goes on in an organization of our size, it used to require a very complex um, manual content sync and merge process. That would at, take, at times take the days, right? So we, and, and, we and, and our technology choices were very limited. It used to be like very dependent on the CMS product we selected. And that, because of that, our um, efforts for the operational and performance efficiency, bringing that in, were very limited because we could only do so much to improve the performance of our, uh, our website or our operations, right? So, and the infrastructure, because the infrastructure now needed to maintain this um, huge volume was also very pre pretty expensive to maintain. So, and that, why, why did we have to change? What I think coming back to now, today's digital marketing era, modern era, right? where we have suddenly the explosion of all the different customer touch points because the devices and channels are being added more so often than ever before, right? We have to support, we have to meet customer where we are. We heard in past last two days repeatedly, right? We can't rely on customer to come to us. We have to be where customers are. It's sometimes on the other's platform too. And with through very highly personalized journey that customers can relate to, can then, uh, and then they want to come to your site, right? So we had to be relevant. And in order to, and, and the content is at the heart of all of it. So in order to support all of that, it is imperative that we have that very optimized content structure and very streamlined content lifecycle management process. And we have a flexible tool that allows us to do that. So we decided to change, right? We took the red pill. We set out on a journey of multiple platform transformation at once. And what we, what we did is we adapted to the composable architecture. That means that microservices in the backend componentized UI frontend architecture. We decided to go headless for the CMS and use content as service. And we wanted uh, this centralized, we wanted that platform that, that allows us that flexibility to set up that omnichannel centralized platform, which would have, which would be multi-tenant, because we had to set up, we had to support this large volume of different applications, but at the same time allowed them the autonomy and independence of working in their silos, but without breaking or jeopardizing the stability of the platform. So we, we, it has to be reliable. It has to be available to deploy the time-sensitive content at the right time, right, right at the very moment. And we, the platform had to be performant because the volume of the content that we had that feeds into different channel, it has to be available 24 by seven. There is no option, right? So, and then it has to be self-service because, because of the size of the organization, you cannot rely on a central team to, to create your content structure, deploy your content, right? So we had to be, it has to be a self-service platform. So we set out on a journey to build that platform, right? We, we wanted to support, our wish list was long when we, when we started this. We wanted the decentralized plat development model, right? We wanted the developers to be able to create their own content structure through, as part of their life, the application development process without learning the nitty gritty of the platform that they are building the structure for, right? We, because we don't want them to learn one product today and then tomorrow they have to, they, they have to get acquainted to do completely new uh, platform, right? So we wanted the decentralized content model development model. And then we wanted the platform to support the custom data types, so custom content types, so that we could build the build the content structure that to cater for our, like we have variety of use cases for the, to that what we use the content management platform for. In order to cater to that, we wanted the platform that allow us to support the custom content types. We wanted to have the authoring tool that is, that supports the multiple content variation without having to rewrite each of it. 
So we wanted to say we wanted to just personalize um, one field or one message. We didn't want to reauthor that content. We wanted it to take the remaining message, but just allow us to customize part of the uh, co component. We wanted to support the have the device agnostic content type so that we could support any device and any channel without putting much effort, right? We wanted it to have the meta tag, meta tagging, uh, allowed the meta tagging so that we could take this content, integrate it into our personalization engine and for the adaptive as well as the prescriptive personalization easily. And then we wanted it to also, we wanted the platform that allow us to customize the content publishing workflows for our SEO as well as the accessibility and the legal branding requirements. So it seemed like we had a long list, right? And it seemed like we were looking for a unicorn, right? So, and, we, and, and on top of it, we were building this, building this pieces of Lego pieces, right? On our, on our front end area as well as the APIs area. So we wanted this structure to fit as part of the pieces. Now, fast forward. What we have today, we have a headless CMS platform. We, are some, we have somewhat centralized, consolidated the multiple different um, uh, CMS platforms that we had. We have this componentized architecture built in. It, we, uh, with the automy and our content structures are based on the automic content types. We have the, con but however, we have the content structure that is based on the user experience. Now, what that does is that if I want to present the same content to the different user UI component, right, I wouldn't be able to do that because that would mean that I will have to rewrite the content for that component. So we were also, we were struggling to keep our authoring simple, but still allow the flexibility to build the content structure to, to meet our need. So with, uh, uh, if, if I have to build a structure that allows me to reuse the content by automizing the content type, because I want to reuse that atomic component into multiple places, my authoring experience becomes extremely complicated, right? It, it clutters, and sometimes they have to author like hundreds of different content fields in order to bring, get the page out. And that is not a sustainable model, right? So that, that is what we have, we struggle to still have the multiple versions of the content. Even after a lot of customization, we are able to, we will be able to set up the process which allows us the multiple versions, but it is very tedious process. And that then, it limits its use, right? Because we don't want to go through this pain of setting up the versioning in order to achieve that, what we want to deliver tomorrow. So that, that limits its use. So, now, so in all of this kind of, we were then, we wanted to continue our journey. It's not the, what we, where we wanted to be. So we continued our journey. And we are what we want, uh, we are at a plat time, we are at a place where we have set up a platform where it is decoupled, CMS, which is API first, which supports the modular content structure. It has a content first approach it is, what we have done is we, we are, along with this transformation on the content management side, we were doing the, we were doing the transformation on the UI side. So we have built all that UI building blocks that aligns to our design system. So that now what we have done is we took that building blocks, automized UI models, and we created the automized content types in CMS. So we have the synergy between two now. We could now enforce the brand alignment between uh, using through the use of content management. What we did is we took this building blocks. We have a centralized component uh, development library, I mean development platform for the UI side. What we did is we integrated this automized content type into that uh, component development platform so that allowed, that now that we have a place where our designer can see the UI component before using it while creating their design experience. They can see the different variations that compositions that, uh, that component provides. Uh, our 
Our CI team can see what are the different fields that they would be able to author. Our developer can see how the component will act, uh, how to create, how they, how, will, how they will be able to integrate it with the CMS platform. We have a standardized way to integrate with the CMS platform that has the built-in mechanism of the fallback. So all, all of this become now like plug and play. Now, our, and most importantly, what we did change is that we created the content structure based on the business content model. Instead of, instead of creating the user experience-based content model, we, changed, we shifted to creating the business content model. Now, what that allowed us is to create the content for the, the domain-specific uh, subject, and then we would be able to present that content in any different UI component just through the mapping. Right? So it became more of a, more of a config over code uh, mechanism. To, to, and then we would be able to support any, we could create any new UI component, but we would be able to reuse the same content in any different channels or any devices. And we built the SEO, we standardized our SEO best practices. We created the content structure to encapsulate all of that. We created a standard way of integrating with the analytics, created that structure. And then we integrated into our page and component template. Now, that, what, that, what happened is that now it became a part of my content authoring. So you would not, we would not have those uh, non-compliance issue on the SEO and accessibility side. Also, we, we customized the publishing workflow that would allow us to integrate with our work intake tool. So now that auditing requirement compliance also is taken care automatically as part of that. We created a service that encapsulates all the different types of testing, like we, be it the visual experience testing, or it is performance testing, or the SC or Keto. And what we, in, what did, we took this service and integrated it into our content publishing workflow. So now we can deploy the content much faster without having to wait all the time to go through this series of test cases. It, it is just all automated now. And we mitigated the limitations of this decoupled CMS because that's the biggest problem we, we faced when we, we moved into this headless CMS model is that our content implementation team lost the flexibility to preview their component within the system, right? And what they had to do is every time they wanted to make any updates to it, they had to go through this lengthy cycle of deploy my content, let the front end pick up, go through all the cache flushing, and then that, that cycle was too long for them. And it, it kind of, you know, it, it kind of restricted the, the, their uh, output. So what we mitigated this restriction by coupling our content centralized component platform with CMS. We brought that into CMS because of the flexibility that tool provided us. We could integrate all our components into the CMS. So now they got not only the in-author preview, right? And in, in, in future, we plan to extend it to more provide kind of a visivic type of editing. So that kind of give you the best of both the worlds, right? And for the meta tagging, right? We, that was another requirement we had that the, the, the platform should have be, allow the meta tagging so that we could easily integrate all this variation to the personalization engine. And now this, because of this tag-based content management platform, we could segregate the authoring of similar type of components in one place. We could tag them. We could enable the personalization by integrating with our personalization feed engine. And then we also would, were able to tag this component with the rules, and we could enable the prescriptive personalization. So we now had both adaptive personalization through the supervised learning model, uh, uh, adaptive personalization, as well as the prescriptive personalization with allowing for the overrides that if we wanted to, uh, we wanted to have. So it seemed like we, we had achieved, I mean, we are, not, we are not there yet, 
but it seems like we had achieved most of our use cases that are the needs, right, that we have, and we are kind of on our way to build that unicorn for us. So I wanted to go through a sample of what we are doing and what I've been rambling about, right? So about componentizing and so these are our these are our two pages on our website where you can see that how we are categorizing or componentizing the the front end. And if you see, notice that the two components, right, on the different pages have the different look and feel, but we, they have many they have similar content. But not all the contents are same. It's not like shared exactly, because that's not what you do in the marketing, typically marketing use case, right? You wanted to share some of the content, which is core content, but at the same time, we want to give that personalized treatment. So with that business separation of the content model, we could now we could author the content for that business model. We could share the legal content wherever we wanted. We could share the images wherever we wanted based on the use cases, but we could still personalize that offer campaign depending on the use case, right? And, that, and, and also we have, all, it, it is all SEO enabled, it is all S accessibility compliant because now it is aligning with our UI building blocks, which is already built with the SEO, with the accessibility in mind. So it is, they, they, they are compliant, um, they, they are fully compliant, they are brand compliant, they have legal compliance. So now we, that is, so th that is how we have achieved basically the maximum content reuse by reducing our authoring and without having to duplicate the contents right everywhere. And then it allowed us to, to mitigate all of that content inconsistency allowed us to deploy the content faster for any new channel without we having to reauthor it multiple times and multiple uh, allow us to do the multiple variations management allow us to multi allow us the multiple versioning to support the multiple releases uh, that we have in uh, place in our process so i think we we achieved the in our journey i think we have made our platform future proof by encapsulating, and I've been listening to most of the expert talking in the last two days, and right, and that made me feel really good about what we have implemented is, 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 is comprising of all that, that suggestion, best practices that we've been talking, that we should have in place. Yeah, so that, that's, that's our journey, and it is, it's not without, it's not without pain and tears, but I think we are, we are there. <laughs>